Welcome to Founder Stories with Galen Data. My name is Chris Dupont, CEO and co-founder of Galen Data, the leading cloud platform for connected mental devices. Every company founder has a story to tell, and this series is about sharing those stories. Joining me today is Vina Samaretti, CEO and co-founder of Neuro Rehab VR. Vina, thanks for taking some time to share some insights about your mental device company. Of course, thank you for having me, Chris. Absolutely, yeah. thanks for making the time. Uh, let's just dive right in. Every company has a story, Vina. Let's start with your elevator pitch. Definitely. Uh, so what we do is we develop virtual reality therapy exercises for physical therapy and occupational therapy. We work with patients who have had a stroke, brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, Parkinson's, MS, the whole neuro population. And we've recently also expanded to orthopedic patients. And what we do is we help them with their therapy so that they can uh, work on their upper extremity training, lower extremity training, core control, and get back that limb function as much as they can with gamified therapy exercises, which are engaging, motivating, and really show the progress that they're making through our data analytics portal. And we have seen that as soon as the patients put on the headset, they're much more engaged, they're motivated. And now the therapists also have a really good tool in their belt now so that they can uh, work with these patients and provide that outcomes that they're looking for. That's amazing and super cool. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's a huge need for that. Mm -hmm. What was that, that aha moment that made you start your company? Yeah. So, you know, when I was uh, working on this company, I was also working on my PhD at the same time. So I was splitting my time between uh, building these applications for the patients at a clinic and then also trying to do my PhD and teaching a couple of classes. So uh, it was a lot. And then my aha moment was when I built the first few applications exercises and the patient started to try it and the therapist started to try it, there was such a big difference between, you know, walking on a treadmill and just looking at a bare wall versus putting on a virtual reality headset and you're transported to a really pretty scenario. You're working on a, a countryside pathway, you're picking up coins and we saw a big difference. People are just motivated. You can see that change in their body and their perception and they're laughing and they're actually enjoying physical therapy right now versus usually nobody really wants to do physical therapy. And that was my aha movement to show like there's something here and you know people are really enjoying it and that is leading directly to the outcomes that they're receiving uh, using virtual reality. So that was the aha moment where it made me drop out of my PhD and work well, on this full time well, right now. First, getting a PhD <laughs> and starting a company, I, I don't know how you do that. that. That's incredibly amazing. And then making therapy fun. Uh, mm -hmm. huge value. Totally, totally cool. I can see that. Amazing. Amazing. Can you share some of the highs and lows of starting your company? Of course. I mean, there's, as a startup founder, everybody knows the highs are high and the lows are even lower, but that's something that everybody has to go through. I think for me, the highs were being able to build something that people are actually using and benefiting from it. I and mean, I think in the back of my head, I always, I never thought of myself as an entrepreneur. I thought of myself as a person who builds products to help people and just seeing that happen. And even now, uh, I've seen this so many times when I go to a clinic and we work with a therapist or a patient and they're so excited about it. And then we, you know, we get stories where the therapist or their caretaker, the patient's caretakers tell, tell us that we have never seen them move like this before. You know, we've never seen them, you know, lift up their hand to the top shelf in one of our uh, grocery store applications or, you know, bent over, you know, from their wheelchair because they're always scared to do it. You know, that is what keeps me going and that, that fulfillment of, you know, building a product that is actually helping people. And yeah. then I go ahead. No, no, please. Yeah. And then I, I think the independence of being able to build something and having control over business decisions and what to pursue and the strategies, that has always been fun for me, uh, figuring out, you know, talking to our customers and asking them exactly what should we build next so that, that we are providing the as much as value as we can and being able to make those decisions, working on go-to-market strategies, uh, you know, sales and marketing, all of that. I know it's a lot of hats to wear, but I'm learning so much. And the independence of being able to pursue what we want is, I, I really love doing that. 
and then just innovating in a space we, what we are doing is we are disrupting the physical therapy space with new technology and it's uh, not easy to bring new technology plus the education piece into it but we've i've had a lot of fun doing that we also have a certification program so that now therapists can be vr certified uh therapists oh, cool. and it's uh you know both certified by the aot and the apta and you can take this course and you add this new skill to a repertoire as a physical therapist. So we are innovating and also uh, disrupting the space at the same time. And then I guess personal growth of doing all of this, I don't think I would have learned as much as I have learned right now in any other job, in a nine to five job. So that has been uh, amazing for me. When it comes to Lowe's, uh, I'm sure every founder goes through this. It's the uncertainty of being in as a startup founder you know one day you're like everything is amazing and the next day like things could fall apart <laughs> any second so that having that but being able to take that and make sure that you're able to control your emotions make sure that you know you're on a uh, being able to deal with it i, I think i'm much more thick-skinned and I, I think i can handle more things right now than i could maybe three four years ago but like something happens I'm like okay we'll think about how to fix it versus the the repercussions of it and obviously i think we touched upon this a little bit the stress and pressure pressure of making sure the company is successful for your the people that are following you and also your investors making sure that you're making the right decisions to move the company forward and then maybe a couple other things like the setbacks that you have making sure that doesn't that's not the lowest you know you're able to deal with that and learn from it and then make that a positive versus a negative. Uh, that's something that I'm also learning too. And then work-life balance yeah. is one of the lows. It's never there, but that's something that you kind of uh, give up for your startup, at least in the beginning. But I'm trying to get better at the work-life balance yeah. piece. Yeah. I can relate to that. You said but, something that was, first of all, that's a very inspiring story, but you also said something that resonated with me is you're helping people. You're helping improve the human condition through your your engineering, your science. And I think that's what drives us pretty hard is not just the paycheck, but actually, you know, helping improve the human condition. So I love that. I, I certainly identify with that. Uh, amazing, amazing. And then, you know, not only are you doing the science and engineering, you have the business side, invoicing, managing people, investments. Yes. That's yeah. a lot of work. So total right. respect. Um, yeah, no, I, I inspiring, the, inspirational. The amount of admin work that I do is crazy. Yeah. Right. I can relate. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, amazing. And then the last question, um, any advice for other startup founders? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I've been in this for long enough and I keep going back and think about what are the lessons that I've learned and what I would do different. And I think one of the biggest ones that I always tell anybody and startup founders is who are trying to build something, get it out there, make sure that, you know, somebody will pay for it. That's when you, you create a business, right? And I always say, make sure you have product market fit. That's the biggest piece. If you do not have that, then nothing else that you do really matters. So I think talking to your customers or potential customers from day one, even now, you know, I, I have pretty close contacts with our customers. I still learn something every time I speak to them or something about you know this is something that we can do better or this is the problems that they're having or issues that they're having that can be solved with our uh, device so talking to customers making sure that's really really perfect for a market fit once that falls into place then you can add sales and marketing and all of that to kind of uh, 10x that reach of your product that would be my biggest uh, you know you know, advice other than that, surround yourself with good mentors. I've that's uh, I'm, you know, lucky to say I have some really, really good advisors and mentors around me that have uh, pushed me in the right direction and also made me a better person and uh, taught me the things that you know they learned during working on their startup so that I don't make the same mistakes maybe that they did or uh, things like that. So that has been really, really helpful to learn from somebody that has been there and done it and then working through go to market strategies, working through how to pitch to investors in, you know, our deck and if and go to like everything around that uh, you need in a startup. So that's a I kind of try to take all the information from them and disseminate that and take what works really well for us so that we can be more efficient and move forward uh, you know, quickly. 
That's amazing advice, good advice. If somebody wanted to learn more about your company or contact you, how would they do that? Sure. Uh, we are Neuro Rehab VR, so you can find us at neurorehabvr.com. And then we are on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and Instagram at Neuro Rehab VR. That's awesome. You're an inspiration to me. I know you're going to be an inspiration to other founders. So thank you again and wishing you the best success with your company. Thank you so much for having okay. me on the podcast. Yeah.